Hey everybody, welcome to Outtake ESL. This is Sean. Um, welcome to our new format here. Um, hoping to take this channel in a kind of more professional direction uh, with this format. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to kind of talk uh, a little bit more about these lesson plans and how to sort of um, present them uh, and how to, uh, what kind of approaches you can use in the classroom uh, when working with these materials. Uh, I think that uh, they'll benefit you if you're looking for different kinds of ideas uh, for your own classroom. Um, materials uh, I hope to make available also uh, for purchase. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please uh, comment in the section below. I'd also like to thank um, I'd like to thank OSB uh, software for giving me uh, the opportunity or for, for the software that allows me to use this sort of split screen aspect. Um, and I'd also like to thank the uh, YouTube community that I've kind of been following and, and uh, being a part of, uh, conversing with uh, over the course of the last six months. Uh, within the field of ESL, uh, Mike's ESL uh, has been a, a big, uh, big help uh, and kind of a, a, uh, has done a lot for, for expanding my perspective on, on the potential of, of, of ESL as an uh, instructive uh, medium. Uh, I'd also like to thank bloggers like uh, Serpent ZA and Alawa 86 and their ADV channel. It's given me kind of a, you know, it's expanded my sort of ideas about using technology uh, while in a foreign country, basically. Um, I've, I've done some little, I've done a little bit of, of, uh, of blogging, but uh, I really didn't really see a lot of potential in it, to be honest with you, until I started watching their, their channels and, and actually conversing with them. Um, in, to some extent. <laughs> uh, also, I'd like to thank, outside of this spectrum, I'd like to thank people like Geeks and Gamers, uh, That Star Wars Girl, That Jumpman, Anna Akana. Um, they've also been uh, a great sort of uh, influence and uh, inspiration in a lot of ways and sort of letting me sort of uh, realize the potential of my own uh, work here on YouTube. So thanks, thanks to all you people, and also one special thank you to uh, Jao Yo. Uh, I actually had a conversation with him concerning um, using iMovie software as opposed to Final Cut Pro. Uh, I had always used iMovie just because it was the easiest thing for me to do, uh, and it was usually kind of short on time uh, in, in wanting to achieve what I wanted to achieve, uh, but he sort of uh, gave me a little bit of a spurring into to using Final Cut Pro. Uh, software and that's that's really just kind of opened up a lot of possibilities here uh, and has inspired me to you know um, to upgrade you know, to make my content more and more sort of um, accessible so what I want to do here now is talk through uh, a presentation I did recently for my seventh graders here it's a kind of a continuation of a preparatory uh, class uh, like I stressed in, in my other videos uh, especially in the one about my fifth grade, uh, you really want to have an introductory class prepared for uh, ESL. It doesn't really matter what job you're doing, there's going to be that first day in the classroom where you have really no direction. You have no, maybe no curriculum, no textbook, no idea really of what's expected of you. So you kind of got to take the bull by the horns and put something together based on introductions. And, and I would say this is a good place to start. Um, I've mentioned before that I use I use ESL libraries materials quite often, and that's kind of what I plan to do, you know, kind of from here on out. Um, uh, I like their illustrations, I like the materials, and I find it very easy to kind of work with them in my classrooms. So, uh, big kudos to them, and a big recommendation for their work. Uh, check them out on the internet. So this is my seventh grade presentation. I know I've done a fifth grade one. This is seventh grade, so it involves a little more language, a little more complex. Uh, and this one kind of worked out well because the module in their textbook, I found out, was around similar language. So this is one I was able to do for two weeks. Two can do one part of it and then the second part of it the next week. And then I like that aspect because that second class, you're allowed to kind of review what you did in the first class. And I, I always make that a part of my classroom and my lessons is that I'm, I spend a little bit of time reviewing what we did last time. It goes a little bit like this. Starts off with hello. And uh, it's the first day, so I write my name on the board and uh, I should 
share the new slide. So what does this mean? Good morning. Want to get familiar with those kind of formal greetings. Good afternoon. Good evening. All right. So at this point, I would uh, introduce my name, Sean, Mr. Sardo, and this is something I like to stress now that I don't see a lot of ESL teachers doing, and I, I think it's important an important distinction, and that's uh, I expect them to use the um, the title of Mr. when speaking to me as if they were speaking to their Chinese teachers. So uh, I try and stress that idea, not only for that idea of sort of uh, delineating, you know, teacher from student, um, but also um, it reinforces that idea of gender in, in our language that's inherent in the English language, uh, he and she, uh, which, isn't, which isn't inherent in their own languages, uh, in Chinese at least. Um, and this kind of just reinforces that, using that Mr. and Mrs. Uh, or Miss or Mrs. You know. So uh, try and make that distinction. Very often, and I, and I, you know, I, I don't think it's that, there's, there's a good place for it and, and maybe, uh, certainly in a public school, I think it, it's almost necessary and essential to reinforce that. Um, I, but I understand how maybe training centers are more familiar and they, less formal and they want you to use your, it's more common to use your first name, but I, I just feel it's better to, to having that delineation between teacher and student. I, I think it's more productive that way, that, that there's focus on the material and not so much on you as a, as a friend or a person. So I do that here, and I also will hand out, at this point I hand out a, a sheet, a uh, sign-up sheet. I put the Chinese name, in Chinese, pinyin, uh, translated in pinyin, and English name, if they have an English name they want to use. I said to hand that around, I ask them to sign in their names, because I intend to use their names uh, in the next class, in future classes. Hello. Then I go over class rules. This is really important, I think. Um, this is the best way to do it, uh, to give the students kind of a, just a general expectations in the classroom. And I think it's the best way of approaches to kind of just continually reinforce that, uh, you know, just no matter how briefly, just to kind of keep going over those rules. And that's the best way to kind of, um, you know, impress them upon them, uh, not so much you know, it's worse, so they don't, if they don't expect, don't know what the expectations are at all, what kind of protocols they should expect in the classroom, that's, that's never a good thing. Um, but this is also probably a better disciplinary approach, just to kind of reinforce it, so they, they kind of get in their heads, and this, this is what's making it work, you know, making the classroom work correctly. Uh, so I do, I do my, my lessons here, I keep them very basic, please listen. Give them the Chinese, please sit down here. I'm also doing hand gestures. You know, please listen, please sit down because I use those uh, in class when it gets too loud. You know, you're just going to just do things like this. Right? No eating, no drinking, and speak English. Right? And I do find myself using these, uh, these quite often. You know? And uh, I, I do sometimes say, Anji, 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 be quiet. So speak English is probably the most important rule in your classroom. And then I introduced the uh, reward system that we're going to use in the class. I split the, team, uh, the class up into two teams. I mean, maybe this two rows of desk, team one, and the other two rows of desk, team two. And I just kind of introduced paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors. Um, most, most kids are familiar with that. Uh, it also is good because you can kind of do it from, you know, opposite ends of the classroom. You know, I can stand in the front of the classroom and pick a kid in the back of the classroom and say, right, paper, scissors, one, two, three. Boom. If I win, uh, they don't get a point. If they win, they get their team gets the point. And then I introduce the phonics system. Once again, this is something uh, it's kind of new to me. I've uh, decided to do it in the public schools because I think it's really important and I, I'm really, um, I don't know what I'm going to say, I, I'm really happy that I, that I decided to take this approach um, to have the first 15 minutes just always kind of be based on phonics because I, I don't think if there's anything more essential to an oral English class is that pronunciation, you know, that's, that's really one of the big reasons you're teaching English is so they get that sort of authentic sense of sound and, and tonal quality. 
a pronunciation of words. Um, so what I've done is decided to dedicate that 15 minutes of every class to just phonic practice, and that involves choral drilling and just kind of maybe just rote drilling and sampling. And, and it's good because you're hearing the students, you're hearing that classroom. Uh, and, you know, the principals and the other teachers are here in that classroom actually speaking English at that point. That's really what everybody wants to hear. Uh, so, uh, so I'm glad that, that I'm taking this approach now. What I'm doing with the seventh grade is, is I'm, you know, I'm going to focus on one set in one week and then another set the next week and with a little review uh, as we go along. Uh, so what I did is I took the five vowels here and I split them into just a group of two and a group of three, A and E, and then I, O, and U. Whereas with my fifth grade, I'm just going to, you know, do two weeks of the same set. Like, so I'll do A and E one week, and then the following week I'll do A and E again, just to kind of keep reinforcing it. Um, here in China, that sixth grade is really important because it's a testing. So I guess the extra enforcement I'm going to give to the fifth graders and, and sort of the re reviews the seventh graders. Uh, my next plans with this sort of approach is to do, you know, with the seventh graders, I'm going to do consonants one week, maybe a group of four similar consonants or three consonants, and then the following week we'll do diphthongs, maybe two or three diphthongs that are also familiar. So I think what I got next is like L and N, uh, R and G, and uh, then the following week we're going to do work with NG, ING, and uh, TCH, and CH, and SH, uh, those did poems. But here we start off with vowels. Uh, first I want to make sure they know what they are. A, B, I, O, U, sometimes Y. And I, once again, I stress that, okay, there's a long sound, and then there's a short sound, short sound. So let's talk about A, 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 and I show them the pronunciation symbol. And I write this on the board, A, and then I give them kind of an example, as in A, A, we never know A, A, the monkey, <laughs> whatever. So I had to change that to tape. Uh, this is actually the old slide, uh, the newer slide is the same thing I changed and, and used in class, but they, they always go monkey. I'm like, A, monkey? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, and then I do short, and this is kind of, you know, this is the kind of the more challenging aspect of phonics, and there's those short sounds, ah, ah. A lot, of, a lot of times they were doing all, um, for whatever reason. And ah, as an apple, ah, ah, ah. Then you drill it, cool, drill it, uh, maybe go back and sample it, and maybe what's this, what's the long, what's the short? And then we do E, E as in tree, tree. Short as an eh, 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 egg, egg, egg. Drill, drill, drill. And then I go into this exercise here. It's kind of the more challenging aspect. First, I kind of introduce the exercise. All right, so I have a word here, and I have a vowel. vowel. And it's the short version, the short version of A. Okay, what's that sound? I'm trying to get anybody who knows it. Ah, ah, ah. All right, and I have mm -hmm. You might not know the consonant sound, so it's best to kind of give it to them. So at n t at n t. So you're working on blending here, and, and you're trying to get somebody to say the word and t and t and and and. Good. All right. So now the end of the exercise, and this is this is really important in ESL that that I find it I find it counterproductive not to stress this. Um, it's, it's good to find exercises that are simple, that don't require a lot of explanation, not a lot of incidental language, and that you repeat those exercises. Once you find that they understand, the students understand them and can work with that exercise, repeat it. Use it again. Use it maybe two weeks or three weeks, and then come back to it another you know, four weeks from now and use it again. Um, because you don't have to waste so much time explaining or you know, having kids being confused about what they're supposed to do, you know, and you want them to be focused on language, and, and so I think it's really important to, like, um, you know, when I first started in ESL, my, my first job was um, with colleges, so you're given a little bit of leeway with proficiency and understanding instruction. You could introduce maybe a little more unique and complex games, but, uh, and exercises, 
But uh, you know, with these younger kids and these beginners, you know, you just don't want to. You don't want to give them anything that's just too hard to understand, or it's going to be really sort of have a lot of rules and different sort of aspects to it that you need to explain. You want to just set up something that's simple, easy, exercise, fit, and work it, uh, and work with that exercise. And maybe use a gaming aspect if you want to make it fun. I, I think using that reward system, then use it as a reward base, uh, and don't use it as like the, the way of sort of. Uh, implementing the language or producing the language. So we have this. They they know how they know what's expected here. I go into the next word, and my next example. And I got t and I got p. And I ask them, okay, is this long or short? Long or short? T is long. So t a p t a p t a p. Who wants to say word? Who wants to say word? A person. There's down. So you just kind of go through it now that they have they get the hang of it. What's this? Long or short? Short. Ah, so ah, 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 And here they're getting the hang of it. Now they're starting to think of consonant sounds. You know, what's this? Long or short? Short. Ah, ah, ah. So they don't want to even try it. You know, without giving them a certain and. Also important to like try and move away from na and ta. You can get rid of the uh there. Tit, tit, tit. Take. Take an exercise. Cat. Tit, er. A, n. Tit, er, a, n. Tit, er, a, n. Tit, er, a, n. You can't really spell it. Like it's a train. You get it? Paper, scissors, stone. Uh, and, uh. Now you can start to make a time here. You know, now they get the hang of it. You can start to you know, pick things up, get into the game, start to have fun with it. And then I move on to my first listening exercise. And this is kind of how I introduce the, the more formal, topical aspect of, of the lesson. I usually start with listening. And what I do here is, like I said before, I take those ESL library um, dialogues, I load them into my uh, audio software, um, uh, my audio software uh, program, Audacity. Uh, is it Audacity? I think it's Audacity. And uh, then I can cut it up. You know, I can cut up into different sections. I can I can emit parts of a dialogue that I don't think are necessary or going to be too difficult. And I can shorten dialogues. Uh, and sometimes I can even make them longer if, if I get really involved. Um, but uh, this is where I, I kind of start to use that uh, sort of uh, skill set, and this is how I introduce it. I do a listening exercise. Uh, here I've taken the entire dialogue and I've loaded it into this, uh, into the dialogue A. Uh, I load the dialogue A in there as an image. Uh, you go into Photoshop, I use a specific font, uh, I you know, create an image. Uh, and then I load it into the program, into the PPT as an image, and then I go into action settings, and I just load in the audio. So here I have the entire dialogue. Usually I'm going in and I'm getting rid of like you know the precursory stuff that says like audio dialogue A. It's, Hello, you know I get rid of I cut all that out. I want to go I want to go right into the dialogue. You know, I don't want to waste any time with this other confusing incidental language. So it's loaded in here. And the exercise, in, in this case, is like to listen along, and I have a few blanks missing here. So I expect them to listen. Hello, I'm Jane. Hi, I'm Casey. Where are you from, Casey? I'm from Toronto. And you? I'm from Winnipeg. Nice to meet you, Jane. You too. All right, so now we'll go through it as a class here. We'll listen to it. I, I might play it twice sometimes. Uh, once again, it's loaded into that image. The action settings of the dialogue A. I'll load it somewhere on the screen somewhere so I can just kind of press on it or click on it. And we go through the dialogue and we do this as a class. Repeat after me. Hello, I'm Jay. Hello, I'm Jay. Hi, I'm Casey. Hi, I'm Casey. And I have, okay, what is this here? What did they say there? Uh, so and so, what is it? Where are you from? All right, great. Hey, Chris, it's Stone. Where are you from, Casey? I'm from Toronto. So, Toronto, Winnipeg, 
Uh, Winnipeg, they're not going to know these these cities. Uh, they're not going to know the pronunciation of those words. They're difficult for them, and they're, they're a little too obscure for a seventh grader in China. Um, so you want to keep that in mind uh, when you have these sort of obscure cities. It's good to have them out there, but you want to you know just give them a quick explanation. City of Canada, city of Canada. To get too depth in it, and you. Nice to meet you and you too. And then I had this slide here that I originally was going to use, but I, I just decided to skip over, realizing that Winnipeg and Toronto were just too, diff too, kind of too difficult for them. But, you know, you have it. I made it. It's ready for maybe a more advanced class if I ever want to use this again. And I would play the dialogue again. So what's the boy's name? Casey, where is he from? What's the girl's name? Where is she from? And then I do the second dialogue because I kind of wanted to, since it's kind of a seventh grade, I wanted to give them the idea of a, a formal language, an informal language. It was, it was originally my intention to sort of focus on that. I made a big exercise about formal and informal language. And, I, and then I came to the conclusion it was a little too advanced uh, to be talking about that. And then I needed to sort of bring my, um, you know, bring my expectations down a lot, uh, bring my level down a lot lower. Uh, just kind of very simple understanding of it. Maybe in high school, uh, the idea of using formal and informal language can be more uh, focused upon. But I got a second dialogue in here, and this time I just kind of, it's similar, but it's... Hey! Hi, what's up? Long time no see. I know, how are things? Good. You? I'm good, thanks. It's great to see you. You too. All right, so it's a, it's a different context, you know, it's, it's uh, informal language. Once again, you go through it, what's the answer, what's the answer? Right. Paper, scissors, stone. Just kind of keep them, keep them engaged. Uh, with this one, because there's some new expressions in here, a little informal expressions, I decided to kind of, you know, once again, my intention was to sort of focus on formal and informal language, uh, so I kind of threw this exercise in there, and uh, but I kept this one in here, I used it in class, uh, you know, what's up, does that mean are you okay, does that mean how are you, does that mean look out, how are you, long time no see, does that mean are you okay, it's getting late, nice to see you, because they're most familiar with, you know, how are you, nice to see you, so, I just kind of want to introduce the other that certain expressions are less formal, and I, in the next two slides, I kind of you know, introduce that idea. Uh, what dialogue was between friends? The first one, A, or the second one, B. Right? B, right? Long time no see. What's up? Friends know each other. And then which one was between strangers? Strangers, people who don't know each other. I mean, like the whole idea, you know, like if it was an advanced, advanced class, I know in adults we, we would get the discussion of like why, why, why do you have two different, you know, because you're basically trying to avoid conflict. <laughs> it's all about sort of being civil, you know, uh, you know, and, and certain certain um, expressions are very sort of familiar expressions that um, that might be taken out of a certain context might be considered a little too personal. A little too familiar. All right, so this exercise here was one I, I was originally going to do in the first class, just to kind of see, check on their proficiencies. You know, that's something you want to do your first day in class, uh, just kind of see where your students are at. Um, I decided to use this in, in my second second week um, because I felt it was a little bit too time consuming and it would involve a little too much explanation. So I decided to use it more as a kind of review aspect. So let's skip over this for now. Uh, usually I would go back and um, uh, I'll edit all those out. I'll move the slides around uh, very frequently. Sometimes the day of class based on what they learned last time or how I feel the flow is going to work. I'll have an entire exercise and I'll say, yeah, that's going to take too much time take it out of there entirely or move it to next week somewhere or use it as a review or something like that. Uh, and that's the advantage of, of having this kind of material and getting it all sort of formatted and, and, uh, and um, you know, 
get it in all sort of format and get it sort of all constructed that you can sort of move it around and uh, even save it for other opportunities. Uh, this is an exercise I came up with last semester that I enjoyed. I thought it was very effective. I think uh, it's, you know, you need to keep the dialogue simple, but you, you basically pick two students. You have one student do read this. The red, uh, the red dialogue, good morning, Mr. Jones, nice to see you. And then you pick another student. Uh, the other opposite team, good morning, Mary, you seem very okay. What does she seem? You very happy, very glad, very, uh, very good today, anything you know, along that lines to, to sort of explain that expression, you leave that to the student. I try and make it so at least, you know, both students have one opportunity to add, put in their own words, you know, at the correct, you know, in correct places. So, yes, Mr. Jones, today I have, what's the word here? Music class, it's my favorite, or you could say guitar class, or you want to say however you want to interpret that. But it has to be, you know, somewhat correct. That's good to know. Have a great time. Good. Now, so they finish that dialogue. You can have them do it again, or you can just go, I got paper, scissors, stone. Whoever's the winner, their team gets the point. Uh, and you can you can do this, you know, you can run through this dialogue again with different students. You can do one side of the class and the second side of the class and just pick two students to rock, paper, scissors. It's different approaches you can have depending on how you uh, read the class. Uh, and then I did a very uh, kind of more formal or uh, informal uh, dialogue. Hey, what's going on? Nothing much. I'm pretty tired, pretty sleepy, pretty... These are kind of words they probably know. I'm pretty bored, maybe a little more advanced. Yeah, I know. It's pretty boring. Do you want to play some sports, basketball, anything they can think of? Mostly like they're going to say basketball. Sure, it sounds good. Skin, paper, scissors, stone. Do it now. Okay, so and so, and this is where having that name sheet comes in real handy. You can just pick two students on the name sheet. Well, now here you want to pick one one person on one team, and one person on the other team, just so you have that that chance to get the point for the team. I'm gonna have this one where it was just kind of mostly fill in the blanks. Uh, hello, I'm Baba. Hi, Baba. I'm Baba. It's Nice to meet you. Where are you from, Baba? I'm from Baba. How about you? I'm from Baba. The only thing here is maybe I should have added from. Uh, I tried it out and uh, it was at the very end of the class, so it, you know I didn't have to get to. I decided to admit it the next my next class uh, altogether just because I I really should have added from in here. I think it, 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 you then still need that sort of cue. Uh, to understand. This is this exercise is pretty successful. Um, it's just kind of what's the question? I'm from Germany. What's the question? Answer, answer, answer. Who's gonna answer? Where are you from? Good. Hey, this is your song. What's the question? What's the question? What's the question? What's the question? What's your name? Hey, this is your song. Question, I'm sick. All right, so uh, how are you? Yes, very good. Paper, scissors, stone. Unless they don't know it, you know, it goes to the end. Oh, anybody know what's the question? What's the question? Are you happy? No. Are you? How are you? No. What's your name? Are you Wendy? They can kind of reinforce that. It's a yes, no question. Are you sick? Then I had this exercise, it's kind of been a pretty good exercise here. My original intention was to have two students kind of have a dialogue. And I think I can do that with maybe a more advanced class, maybe high school or above. But here, I ended up just kind of going to give you a word, give me a sentence, give me a sentence. You can do hands up or you can pick on so you can, you can pick somebody in the class or you can pick somebody off your class sheet. Um, how are you? Uh, are you so-and-so? Uh, um, do you like and anything they can do? Just use you. In it, right? These are all words they've been using, been parts of the language uh, or the questions that we've been familiar that we've been uh, using in class. How? How are you? You paper, scissors, song. Ten seconds. Good. Good. 
morning, good afternoon. I am happy. Are you happy? I'm from. Where are you from? And then this, uh, these slides here, just kind of making those changes between sent, uh, questions. I did this in my fifth grade. So I said, how are Yes, I am. All right, or happy, happy, no. No, I am. I just want to show how you can do that with, you know, any sort of interrogative question. You can kind of just do that. Yes, I am. All right. Where are you from? This was kind of tricky because I originally had done, you kind of always want to work with words that you know they're familiar with, right? You want to use the kind of ideas and vocabulary that, that you know they know, uh, that they should know. So I started out with China. Right, where are you from? I am from China. But then I realized it was National Week, and I'm American. <laughs> and because of the trade war, I was like, all right, maybe that's a little too sensitive. And it's something you have to kind of keep in your mind, uh, teaching overseas, that like, I didn't want to be shooting a gun at China <laughs> as an American during National Week. Uh, so I, uh, I changed it to France, and uh, so I... from the USA. And that was the end of one week. Um, those last, last few slides, I, I kind of found myself running out of time. Uh, I usually would get as far as the 10-second uh, chats, and uh, would run out of time, so I didn't really have to even sort of go into them, uh, into that description of the switches. Um, that would be the case where I would think, and just because of my schedule this year, I don't really have a lot of time to, to move things around in the presentation. So, it's just basically either do it or don't do it. So that would be one week, and then the following week I kind of followed up with a second lesson. And this time, all right, so I just have these up. Now they know my name, they know how we start the class, and I say, what is it? Good morning. See, I have morning classes, I expect them to say morning, and I have afternoon classes, I expect them to say good afternoon. I go over the rules again. First, I give them the Chinese. What's this mean? What's this mean? What's this mean? Yeah. Please listen. They know rock, paper, scissors, so if you want to just go rock, paper, scissors, boom, that's it. Reading, drinking. Speak English, speak English. Once again, it's important to just, I think it's a good approach just to kind of use that sort of repetition to know, to, um, to discipline the class, basically. To get them familiar with the protocols expected. And then I do my second set of vowels. I, I as in eyes. Sure, and this one's kind of a trouble spot I find for Chinese students, you know, across the board. Uh, it, as in it, it, pig, 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 pig. We usually confuse the e, eh, and the it, it, I, it. So we go through them. All. Snow, all, dog, you, as in music, and here I give the YU, the YU phonetic symbol too, just because it's so much the same, but I just decided to use it, <laughs> as in music, and the short, and this one's kind of tricky too, they have some trouble with uh, uh, I usually kind of use it, it's like getting punched, uh, 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 <laughs> like you getting punched in the gut, like sun. It's that same exercise, and this time it's great because, once again, they're familiar with it, they know it, so you can kind of just go right through the exercise. All right, so what is this vowel? And you can kind of stress more things like, all right, what's this vowel here? What is it? Is it long or short? The short, so it, it, it. So, h, e, l, h, e, l, h, e, l. What's the sound? What's the word? What's the word? What's the vowel? Short, uh, 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 uh. What's the vowel? What's the vowel? Long, I, I, I. Right. What's the vowel? 
strong. U, 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 U. What's that? Long. Oh, oh, and here, oh, once again, I, I write all these on the board at this point, so they have all the vowels long and short with their symbols on the board, so I can always go over here and point out, okay, what's the vowel, what's the vowel, what's the vowel? Alright, so, ah, ah, ah. That's wrong, that's wrong, the vowel thing is wrong. I'm oh, I'm sorry, it's oh. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, so it's O, O, O. So I'd go over the board and say, okay, so it's O, O, O. K, O, T. K, O, T, O. Alright. So that's the, the first uh, series of um, phonics that I use in the classroom, the vowels. Uh, then I move on, like I said, I'm going to move on to consonants and diphthongs. And here's that exercise that I called Makes No Sense. And basically the idea is to find the air in, in the following dialogue as we go through each slide. So I introduce him with this slide, and we have two people speaking here. He says, howdy. And he says, hi. And then I kind of go through and I say, all right, so what's this here? Howdy. And what's the Chinese? What's the Chinese? Ni hao, ni hao. All right, so he says, hi. And what's the Chinese? What would you know? What would you know? All right. So what is wrong? What is wrong? Right. And I kind of try to give him the stress, like, ni hao can mean howdy, howdy, hi, hello, all the same thing, right, ni hao, same and all of that. Uh, and when you translate ni hao, it can be howdy, it can be hi, there's not a lot of variations. Um, but wo jidao means I know, I know. So that's not a greeting, you don't say I know to anybody. So that's the, what's wrong here, it should be ni hao. Right, so he says, hi, Mike. And he says, my age is Angelo. My age is Angelo. Uh, my name is Angelo. And this is good because now they're, they're, you know, they're bringing up the producing language themselves. You know, they're, they're correcting it. Uh, so they're producing that language and telling me what's wrong and what it should be. And I throw in a kind of a few variations to kind of just get them sort of in tune and, you know, uh, get their get their perceptions in tune of this dialogue. Uh, so he says, how are you? And he says, I am happy. All right, so the Chinese is right. Nama, and uh, I am happy. That's all right. But if I take a look down here at the picture, he's not happy at all. He's not happy at all. What is he? He's sad. He's sad, right? So he should be happy. And then I start to look at things like spelling and homonyms. Okay, so you have N-U and you have N-U, right? A-N-D and A-E-N-D. So here you kind of, it's kind of a, you know, a little more maybe advanced skill. They're, they're picking up on reading, uh, but they're also understanding that like, so, you know, homonyms in a certain different, in the wrong context can be, can be confusing. Where are you from? Okay, that's one of those questions they know and should be right from. Where are you Once again, I got a hominin here. Okay, I'm from here. And here, to me. Translation, you know, that's part of the, part of the, you know, part of the challenge of learning a second language is, is that translation aspect, so I kind of want I wanted to put that in the class, bring that in the classroom, I want to bring that in the classroom also. Uh, so here I got pronouns, I want to kind of check on them, we might say so to me, we say so do I. This one was kind of difficult, uh, just because they're, they're not really familiar with it was nice meeting you, that expression, as opposed to it was nice knowing you, so this one required a little more explanation, uh, you know, knowing means never see you again, right? It was nice knowing you, it means most likely never see you again, right? But meeting you means possibly see you again, right? And this is kind of the trick question, that's why I kind of figure I'd throw it in there, right? If you look at this, you go, by, zajian, by, zajian. And really, that's all correct. 
that's a good translation. It's a good way of saying um, it. It's a correct translation. Um, but most of them are like, no, goodbye, 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 goodbye. goodbye. Like, no, bye is okay. Bye is okay. It's fine. Bye, Jen. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, bye. Also, all okay. And they're looking at him and they can't figure it out. So then you kind of point out here. It says, make no C's. It should be. <laughs> no one gets it, but that's really kind of the point of it. Um, just kind of my way of throwing a little bit of humor. And introducing that sound cue, that great price is right, wrong answer <laughs> sound cue that I grew up uh, I grew up with. And uh, once you get it in your head, you can kind of go around anything. Anytime you see somebody uh, make a mistake or something fail, you can just go... Dun, 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 uh, and I thought it was fun to bring it in the classroom at that point. Because I'll use it again. Second week, so second dialogue. This time I got three people here. I have Amy, and I point that out. And I have Charlie, and I point him out. And I have Richard, and I point him out. And it's about introducing. So we're talking about three people when you have to introduce somebody. Here is my mother. This is my teacher. And we go through the dialogue once again. The dialogue is ESL library, and I load it into the I load it into the uh, Word dialogue. Charlie, I'd like you to meet my roommate, Richard. Hello, Richard. It's nice to meet you. I'm Amy's brother, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. I'm very pleased to meet you. Amy has told me all about you. Amy has told me all about you, too. I've been looking forward to meeting you for a long time. Well, now that you've finally met, why don't we sit down and have a coffee? Sounds great. Okay. So I might play it twice, but uh, with this one I decided to kind of change it up a little bit so I go right into this exercise here I once again I, I split up this dialogue into sections and so I can break it down into isolate different parts of the language and phrases that I want to sort of sort of the students to focus on and I load those into the speech bubble here so I have blanks here and I want the students to listen and tell me what's missing what's missing Charlie I'd like you to meet my roommate Richard no, Charlie, twice. I'd like you to meet my roommate, Richard. Me too, yeah. All right, so Charlie, I'd like you. They just get like you, like you, and then you play Charlie, the I'd like you to meet my roommate, Richard. I'd like you to me. I'd like you to me. I'd like you to me. Everybody repeat that. Drill it. Hey, for Sister Stone, the person got it correct. You go through the whole dialogue. Hello, Richard. It's nice to meet you. I'm Amy's brother, Charlie. Uh, what's missing? What's missing? Do it twice. I'm your brother. Hi, Charlie. I'm very pleased to meet you. Amy has told me all about you. Hi, Charlie. I'm very pleased to meet you. Amy has told me all about you. Twice. Who knows what it is? Amy has told me all about you. All about you. All about you. All about you. Very good. Paper, sister, stone. Amy has told me all about you, too. I've been looking forward to meeting you for a long time. And we'll just, I just usually follow the same. One, two, two listens, and then I solicit an answer. Sounds great. Sounds great. I'll get this one on the first try. One listen. Once again, I go back to this exercise, I've introduced it, they're familiar with it, ready? Reviewing, it's my chance to kind of review some of that language again. What's your name? Make sure they remember this stuff. I'm from Jinyang, where are you from? And then I introduce a couple more questions. Uh, different aspects to it, so I put pronouns in there. Uh, different third person pronouns, where is he from? Uh, they are doing great. How are they? It's trying to explain that language. And then the new question that they should know. Uh, I'm 23 years old. How are you? Do a quick experience on that. She is 32. How is she too? And then I open it up to the class, to this exercise here. And here uh, here I go to my my um, my name sheets. And I just kind of pick out a student. First I, well, first I do, I say, okay, new question. How old are you? How old are you? 
Let me go through the different ages I have here. I got 20, 35, 12, 43, 19, 57, 101, 6, 23. Go through that as a class, make sure they know their numbers. And then just kind of get a little my name sheet here and say, all right, how old are you? So, 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 you know, on the wind, on the wind, how old are you? On the wind says, I am 12 years old. Uh, Thank you, Uncle uh, How old are you? Sian. Sian, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. Ah, hey, but it's just And we just kind of go through five wins and four, uh, four loses, losses there. Uh, I threw this one in here also. Um, just because it's National Week, and I wanted to get them thinking about when you when you at, when you're asked where are you from, you're you're probably gonna be talking to people who are more familiar with China, so you might want to not. So I said, all right, where are you from? The first student always says, so I'm from China. No, more specific. It's it's okay. It's good to be more specific. Uh, I'm from Xinjiang. I'm from Yangshi. Well, the idea was here to get them to start answering that question a little more specifically because you know, people are becoming more and more, they're going to be talking to people who are more and more familiar with cities and, and provinces in China. And then in their module, they uh, introduced uh, demonstrative uh, pronouns, so I decided to, to do exercises with that at the end of this uh, lesson. Uh, I have what is this, that, these, and those. Uh, so I introduce the question, what is this? And I say it's, okay, so we go through the different options over here. You have chalk, tape, glue, desk. And then I'll just pick somebody on one team, what is this? It's chalk. I have chalk on team one. And I'm on this other team, what is this? It's a desk. All right, so I desk for team two. And I press on the slide, go back to the slide, and it's a desk. All right, so desk is I wonder, paper, scissors, or stem. And then once again, no, what is that? What is that? So it's an eraser, it's a desk, it's a backpack, it's a marker. So yeah, in class, you know, it's good because I can stand in the back of the class and just kind of point to the board, which kind of gives that general idea of how, you know, this tends to be something that's closer in proximity and that is a little bit more distant in proximity. Uh, usually the difference of possessing it or, you know, holding it or something like that as opposed to not. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Uh, but I can go back to class and just kind of point at board and say, what is that? And they can say, it's a desk. All right, and I go to another team, what is that? It's an eraser. Go back to the board, let's see what we got. All right, it's an eraser. All right, it's a winner. Paper, scissors, stone. If they both get it, it's okay. During this exercise, I'll, I also, you know, allow them that it's okay if you both say it's an eraser. If it's team one says it's an eraser and team two says it's an eraser. That's okay, and if they both get it, then they do paper, scissors, stone with both of them, you know. And they still can lose with the paper, scissors, stone, you know. Uh, here I thought it was important to, like, kind of use plural nouns and uh, sort of uh, multiple nouns, uh, combinations of nouns. And so I started to induce that with these and those. What are those? Okay, pens, rulers, plural nouns, scissors, pencils, right? Team one. Two are those. Those are pens. Those are scissors. Are they are scissors. Boom. Paper, scissors, stone. And here I just kind of use the they are in third person because that's what the books did. Uh, here I use the multiple multiple nouns. So you have like uh, you have markers. You have uh, tape and scissors. You have pens and markers. You have rulers and pencils. And here the winning answer is. Pencils and rulers, and I try and just kind of stress that you could say pencils and rulers, rulers and pencils, but really there's no order of significance here. It's not like adjectives. Then I had this exercise that I, I didn't use because it's just basic, kind of a basically a vocabulary exercise, and, and I really feel like in oral English at this point, it's you know, there's so much vocabulary that's just kind of a waste of time, it, especially when you got when you know there's a Chinese teacher, you know, teaching them 
you know, that's really what the Chinese teacher is, is, is really um, good at explaining and describing, you know, other than just, you know, like if you're just doing English, you're just kind of showing a picture and giving them a word. And there's really not a lot of description involved, you know, whereas a Chinese teacher can really sort of describe it and make, make more of an impression with that, with that vocabulary. So I don't think it's that important. So this exercise I put to the, you know, I, I skipped over it and I'll pull it out of here and maybe use it some other place. I don't know. Uh, certainly the format is something I, I repeat uh, you know, often. It's just your basic reveal. So I go, what is it? Ask a student, what is it? Uh, I don't know. All right, ask another student, what is it? Mm, I don't know. What is it? I don't know. And here you can do, my original idea was that I would have the two teams asking, picking people and asking each other, what is it? I don't know. Until they can figure out what it is. This is kind of new vocabulary, so it also that idea I was trying to incorporate of introducing new vocab vocabulary if they didn't know it. Uh, we had, you know, I, the other thing I try and do is, is new words I will use in the phonics section, you know, so they have at least the pronunciation of it. And uh, I'll try and find, isolate words that I can use, you know, with the, with the, in the phonics section that I'm going to be using, you know, less than like glue. And uh, this is just your basic vocabulary exercise, you know. And uh, the idea was to have one team asking the other team, you know, what is it? If this team didn't know, it's I don't know. And then ask the other person on the other team. They would pick them. But a lot of times the class gets too rowdy and it just get out of hand. Especially and if they don't know what the word is, it just kind of seems pointless. Calculator. Using you know the demonstratives, hoping they're using that same sort of uh, expression, the same sort of uh, pronouns in their answers. It is, they are. Once again, I didn't use this. Uh, but this exercise I did use because it was kind of my, my, my culmination of all this using the demonstratives. And so what I do here is I kind of just show this slide here on the board. Say, all right, so we go through the vocabulary, chair, eraser, pencil, ruler, scissors, book, chalk. And what I have here is I have, I make cards. Right? I make the cards with the same images on them. And so I will then take one of these cards. I'll take them here and pick one hold to my chest and just kind of go around the classroom and start picking students. Uh, and they have to ask me, is it a ruler? Is it a ruler? Ah, yes it is. Yes it is. Ah, it's a paper, scissors, down. So is it a ruler? So that student, their team gets a point, right? And then I do paper, scissors, stone. And here I use the paper, scissors, stone a little differently, all right? So if I if I win and they lose, then the student has to come to the front of the classroom. The student becomes the teacher then, and I have the student pick a card. Right? If I lose, then I do it again. All right, so I do it again. All right, so, all right, so now I got another one. I go around the classroom. All right, is it, the teacher might say, the student might say, is it a pencil? Uh, no, it's not. Next student, is it a book? No, it's not. Next student, is it a uh, pen? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Paper, scissors, stone. Okay, so this time I lose. And, uh, uh, no, so this time I win. So the student comes up to the front of the class. And I have a student pick a card. The student picks a card. And then, because, and then because it gets really rowdy at this point, I have to kind of like moderate it myself, you know, so the student will be up there and they'll have their card. And I tell them, you know, don't show the class, don't show the class. Uh, the idea is to have the student pick pick different people, but it gets really rowdy and you just start yelling stuff. So I'll try and find the students that are, that are you know, got their hands up. I'll say, all right, what is it? And I'll say, is it a desk? Is it a desk? So I'll turn to the student on the stage and I'll say, is it a desk? And maybe I'll have to point it out on the board. Is it a desk? No, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Next student, next student, next student. Is it a, is it a scissors? Is it scissors? No, it's not. Uh, next dude, next dude, next dude. Is it glue? Ah, yes, yes, it's glue. All right. 
So now, I give that student, his team, whatever team he's on, whichever side of the classroom, uh, that team gets to the point. And now, uh, I have that student and the student on the stage do rock, paper, scissors. And once again, if that student loses, if the student on the stage loses, he's got to stay on the stage and do it again. Uh, if that student wins, then the student uh, in the class comes back up to the stage and he picks a card. And what I usually do is I let it go on for maybe two or three or four rounds, five rounds. You don't want to get down to the last one because it's just it's too obvious. Um, so you maybe leave it two or three items on the board that haven't been guessed correctly yet. So I did it with is it, and then I also have are they, um, and usually, um, uh, usually, usually I'm running out of time at this point. Usually it's not the end of class, so uh, I get to this slide and maybe do one or two rounds of that. And then at the end of class, you just kind of say the bell rings, quick, go to the board, tally up the scores, see who's win, congratulate the winner. So Thank you and have a good have a good day. And we'll see you next time. Uh, see you next week. Uh, that's usually one of the class. I believe that's the end of the presentation. No. Now here that's where I usually end it. Just because of time. I, I did add, add in I had more rock, paper, scissors role plays here and here it's between three people. And my idea was that right, so the blue is the highlighted me down here, so hi Mike. And I'm talking to the person red, hi, so-and-so, they got to use their real name. And you met my, okay, the person in red, or orange here, who is that? My, that would be your sister. I just kind of wanted to, be, to, to see what family uh, names they knew or family uh, relations they knew. So you have three, three different, uh, three different uh, role players here. So you have uh, the red, blue, and white. And the idea was they would get to the end of this dialogue, and then two two students would do rock, paper, scissors, and that would face off against the third one, rock, paper, scissors, and then they would rock, paper, scissors, and they to whoever gets the point. Uh, but I felt this was a little too complicated, and so I, I decided to admit this also from the lesson. And once again, I did form one. So I'll put this there, I'll put this aside for maybe a more advanced class and do some other thing. A little too much, might be confusing following who's saying what to who. And that was the end uh, of this lesson. Like I said, there was a couple other exercises that I did that I automatically felt were going to be able to advance, so I, put the, I also edited them out of here and able to pop up in my other lessons down a lot. Uh, but that's all for my presentation on what I call new friends uh, for grade seven. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Um, certainly, the students are pretty receptive to to the class, and I'm pretty happy to see that uh, this semester. Um, I hope to do more with this format uh, in the future. I don't know if I'm going to go back and redo some of the other old presentations because I felt a little difficult, uh, a little difficult maybe following along. Uh, the presentation when I was just in the classroom. I enjoyed going in the classroom, and that you know that kind of organically grew out of me just checking my checking my uh, presentations before class. Um, but to some extent, it became a little bit intrusive making these videos, uh, and sometimes it would just be an inconvenience to every teacher who had to get in that classroom, or, or an inconvenience even to me to to go there and and put it all together. And film it in that classroom while you know kids were running around and the bells were going off. So I'm really kind of happy that I have this sort of controlled environment to, to present these to you now. Uh, I hope you also appreciate them. If you do, please let me know in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions or you want to know, maybe if you want to, I, I, my intention is hopefully someday to make this material available um, to others. So uh, if you're interested in maybe getting this this uh, material, let me know. Uh, other than that, uh, I would also appreciate it if you click like and subscribe. That uh, really lets me know that uh, that this work is is, uh, is reaching people. So I appreciate that also. And once again, thanks to all those other YouTubers out there, and thanks to YouTube for providing this platform um, that didn't pre previously exist. Uh, and thanks for expanding my uh, perspective on, on what. Uh, what the possible and what kind of potential is in this platform. Right. 
So that's all for Outtake ESL. This is Sean, and we'll uh, talk to you later.